Hello everyone, I'm Alison Scott. Welcome to Glasgow 2024 Presents Meet the Author. Today I'm delighted to be talking to Mike Cobley, who Ian Banks once described as a writer of properly galaxy-spanning space opera. Mike, I'm going to ask you 10 questions and you get one, just get one in if you like. Thank you so much for coming in today. Cool. Okay, Great first. <laughs> First, where are you based? Uh, I live in Irvine in North North Ayrshire, down on the 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 sort of mid southwest coast, north of where Trump has his uh, golf course, actually. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And so what's that's... your experience or impression of Scotland? Um. Well, my my mother is was was Scottish. My father was English, and I've lived in Scotland for most of my adult life. Um. Um, Scotland is, is uh, I'm trying to make it the, the short version. Scotland is a, a a a small country, but it has um a great deal of variety and contrasts to it, not just geographically, but but in terms of the people as well. So, and um, people in the, in the in the south of the the, the central belt are are um, almost a mystery to the people in the highlands and vice versa. So, so but it's uh, it's uh, there's a lot of different places, a lot of different ty types of flavor. It's um, it's 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 like it's like all the best bits of Europe crammed into a tiny spot. Okay, I'd like you to give me an elevator pitch for your book in uh, two handfuls of words. Oh elevator. right, okay. Um, the last book that I was involved in was the 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 cyberpunk anthology I did a year ago, that came out from Newcon Press. Oh, so I've got. And what was uh, that called? It was called Night Rain and Neon. And uh, and one of the stories was that was in it um, is in the 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 uh, uh, the sort of best of uh, British SF that's coming out from Newcon as well soon. So, um, but here's my elevator pitch. Without a doubt, the surface valve glamour. <laughs> without a doubt, the surface glamour of cyberpunk has been commodified, then intravenously piped back into the veins of culture. And honestly. I can't help my fondness for all that study couture, shiny peripherals, and clipped but effective dialogue, as well as the wider edges of lingo. Not to mention the subtext of yearning for both a futurist future and the mundane past it overlays. Cyberpunk's core function is about how the root of humanity's being adapts when our perceptions are retooled by technology, and how our, our understanding about ourselves either embraces the distortion or fights to remain compassionately human. Night, Rain and Neon is full of stories exploring a hot core of ideas, especially ideas about the way we think and the way we live. That sounds fantastic. Um, what's your favourite ice cream flavour? Ah, that's a tricky one. <laughs> um, it's actually a, a, it's a toss-up between two that I don't think Baskin-Robbins do anymore. Oh. Um, um, I went look. I'm looking, looking online, and they they do. Um, well, the two that I really like when I went to to see the went to the my local audience was um, uh, Chunky Monkey or Fish Food. But I think mm -hmm. I would I would go for the Fish Food, which is like like a sort of a white ice cream with like bits of um, white chocolate shaped fish in it. <laughs> yeah, that's Ben and Very Jerry's, tasty. isn't it? Hey? Fish Food, Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> You're right, it's Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> God. That's what you need to be looking for. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. That's the one. Food. Now, now that question, I mean, I'm not sure if this is going to go with the cyberpunks. So you'll have to have a think. Who is your main character? Um, well, I've got... Um, I actually wrote a story for the anthology. Um, well, I was halfway through it when I realised that uh, the stories that I already got for the anthology were actually a bit longer than the word limit I'd been set with with uh, Ian Waits at Newcon. So I had to drop my story from the anthology. But I went on and finished it anyway, and it came out um, somewhat longer than I'd originally planned because we wanted all the stories to be about 5,000 words or less. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it finished, it came out about 9,000 words. So it's actually, I think, from my, the first novelette that I've ever written. Ooh. It's um, it's called Stealing from Titans, and it's a kind of a um, a a, a, a grim, dark cyberpunk thing set in a, a future half drowned London. So, and, uh, and you know, we, we have that every March now. 
Oh yeah, yeah. So, but the main the main character is a is a, a guy who's he's kind of a hacker, but he's not the kind of hacker that anyone else has met before. So, his his name's Blake, and uh, and I kind of modelled him on um, um, Jack Bannon, the actor who played uh, Alfred Pennyworth in the TV series. So oh, right, I mean, yeah. I was I was because I was actually halfway through writing the thing, and I thought, I know who this should be. I just realised who it should be, and that's that's kind of sort of coloured the way that I died that, that I finished the story so so that's that's and Blake is his name Blake okay and and where can we where can we find the story it's coming out from uh in um in the uh, online magazine Parsec, um, Parsec. From, oh yes that's from, from, that's the PS Publishing PS Publishing is Parsec yes so and, uh, that. about autumn round about maybe August sometime mm-hmm Okay. So I'm hoping that hoping they got a good illustration for it. Oh, lovely. Um, would you would you say Star Trek or Star Wars? Um, I've been sorely disappointed by um quite a bit that's come out under the Star Wars heading for the last few years, mm-hmm. and then I saw Andor, and my was my mind was blown it was just like i felt i felt as if i after watching the first two or three episodes i thought this isn't just like the the the, the star wars i've been waiting my entire life for it's tvsf that i've been waiting my entire life for just, <laughs> just yeah, i think we're probably a similar so, age <laughs> so i think uh, i would at the moment it's it's picard the third season of picard uh was the best picard and it was like it was like it was old school Star Trek as well, so I loved it to bits as well. So, but at the moment, I'm going to plump for Star Wars because of Andor and the Bad Batch, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Okay, have you ever attended a Worldcon? Yes, yes, yes. I was, which I was ones? At the last, <laughs> I was at the last two Glasgow ones, and I was also in um, in Brighton in 1986. Before before I was even a published writer, I was at a Worldcon. All right, so before you've that. been going to Worldcons for a long time. A longer yeah. than some people have been alive. Isn't that depressing? Oh, God. It's, it, it, it's, it's best if you don't think about it, I find. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not really 63. I'm just 30 with 33 years experience. So you're definitely planning to come to Glasgow 2024 then? Uh yes, I do want to come. It's because the finances are a bit shaky and what, but um, I'm gonna have to try and work something out. You just have to put some put your coins in a jar, to save up. And right. and there's also yes. an instalment plan, I think, for the convention membership. So that's a... I've heard yes, and there's a, a little a little bit of um discount for Scottish residents as well. So I, I think that's right too. Yeah. Um, what would you say inspires you to write? Um. <laughs> therapy <laughs> uh, but I think well when I was younger I think that um, um, yeah I'm not the, the sparkling um, uh, like uh, like celebrity that I see before you today you know but um, yeah when I was younger it was it was a bit definitely a route out of um, trying to find out who I was that kind of thing but um, yeah it's, it's like once once you get through that I was I was I read science fiction from from when I was nine, so um, so it's always been part of the uh, part of the the background, and uh, I think I started writing um, stuff when I'm in my early twenties, and then I, then I saw Harlan Ellison at uh, a Glasgow Albacon in eighty five or eighty six, and that just mm, like yeah. set a fire underneath me, and and um, and I went on from there. My mm. first um, Professional publication was nineteen eighty eight, I think. So for oh, well, that is wild, and yeah, yeah. So so, but um, what makes what inspires me now is um, is, is I feel it's it's now so far ingrained in me that um, that uh, it's like like um, the the ideas don't ide- ide- ideas are cheap. Oh, there's loads and loads of ideas out there, but it's 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 the, the sort of the 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 story making machine at the back at the back of your brain. Well, now and then, sort of like cough up something into the hopper, and you go, "What? Okay, then." <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 not in, it's not entirely a sort of a sort of a what's the word? 
uh, not exactly conscious all the time. <laughs> it's not a conscious decision to write. It's like um, something demands to be written, in a way. Mm-hmm. Now, something totally different. What's your favourite band or favourite music? <clears throat> well, um, um, the first uh, uh, the first uh, album that ever got bought for me, nineteen seventy three, was actually my parents bought me a. Uh, a, a a dinosaur like uh, cassette player, nineteen seventy three vintage, mm-hmm. and uh, and at the same time I got a copy of Dark Side of the Moon and Tubular Bells. So, oh, so that's a good start. I must, I must have been I must have been pestering them like mad to to get it. So, um, I think my brother got something as well, but he well, he wasn't as, as as focused on music as me at the, at the time. But mm-hmm. um. Favorite bands, it's just too many to 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 to, to mention. Like going about Ramstein or or Pink Floyd or Van de Graaff Generator or Walking Papers. Who are they? You say? But Did you go to see? Do you go to live music? Yes, yes, yes. So what was, was the last gig the, you saw? I was at the Roger Waters gig. There you go. <laughs> for absolutely epic on on every scale. But I think the the go to band I think I've seen the most I think that's a toss up between maybe Porcupine Tree but no it's Blue Oyster Cult. Oh wow yes. Because I I was a big fan of them for I discovered them back in nineteen seventy five I think it was around about the same time I discovered Van der Graaff Generator and Gentle Giant and blah 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 so. But yeah Blue Oyster Cult is is the band that I I keep coming back to. So. There you go. And what are you writing now, or and what's coming out next? Um, what's what's, what's exciting you there? Well, I've been I've been sort of stop go stop go on uh, a big standalone fantasy novel for the last year and a half. Um, um, but, but things that are just, well, it's been Genesis going on for like two or three years, but that uh, things have got in the way, like you know, like like the pandemic and. And both my parents passing away a couple of two about two years ago, and uh, and illness of various kind, and then I came down with COVID at the beginning of this year. No. And uh, and then I caught something else when I was at the Waters gig. So <laughs> I'm a wreck, tell you, I'm a wreck. But um, but yes, yeah, so I'm, but I mean I am yeah I'm about a third of the way halfway through a a, a big novel um. I can give you the title. I might, I might, might change it, but it's it's called um, Chronicle of a Drowned Empire. Oh, so is that in and your half drowned London or half drowned Britain generally, or I don't know, it's a bit sort of commonality, but it's totally different. It's a, it's a, it's a big sort of um, quite separate fan, fantasy universe. So, the fantasy and universe. Um, so, is that a departure for you, or the, no, no, I've been, new my, series? My first novel was was a, a fan, my first uh, sale was a fantasy trilogy. Mm-hmm. called the Shadow Kings books uh, mm-hmm. back in 2000 so it's mm-hmm. kind of sort of returning to old to old ground as it were that's and a new world, a, this is a new universe for you is it? well it's a standalone it's a standalone, standalone I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm done writing trilogies I really am so. <laughs> okay just, I've, got, I've got too many too many sort of different like books I want to write and I can't write a trilogy of them all so it's going to have to be like um like standalone books on the road. Of course, if it's wildly yeah, successful and someone wants to m- me to write a, a, a follow up, you know, 100k would go very, very nicely down, I think. Really, so. <laughs> yeah, well, if there are any editors listening, we'll you'd see. wait, got 100k in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> 100 beans. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's That's been an absolute delight, Mike. Thanks so much for coming in. Do you have any last it's... words for Glasgow members? And people watching oh, the channel. Oh, just to hope that uh, everyone has a a, a a a good, wild and safe time out there. Okay. Thanks very much again. Okay then, no yeah. problem. Thank you for watching this interview. Find more Meet the Author interviews on our YouTube channel, along with Indie Author Reading Library performances and recordings of previous panels. Hit subscribe to get notifications for every new video. Find us at glasgow2024.org and as Glasgow in 2024 on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Check out our cool merch on redbubble.com backslash people backslash glasgow.
glasgow2024 backslash shop and consider joining by emailing volunteers at glasgow2024.org.